Hi everyone. Today we have Dr. Puneet from Fortis Sharma Bagh. He is the uh, chief orthopedic surgeon uh, who specializes in joint replacement surgeries and particularly a new form of surgery called hip preservation surgery, which I'm sure that uh, not all of you are aware of. So we're gonna uh, focus on surgery. What is it? How is it beneficial for people, and how it can be an alternative to people requiring hip replacement surgery? Thank you, Dr. Puneet, for joining us and uh, taking out time to brief our audience about hip preservation surgery. Yeah, uh, a very good morning to all the audiences out there. And I'm Dr. Puneet Mishra. I'm uh, additional director in orthopedics at Fortis Hospital, Shalimar Bagh. So, as uh, she has uh, very humbly uh, put my profile towards you, uh, I specialize in uh, hip preservation surgeries and uh, joint replacements, fracture surgeries, complex orthopedic trauma. and knee arthroscopy so today we are here about to uh, answer some queries and to raise some patient awareness about uh, what is hip preservation and uh, what all encompasses hip preservation right because although right. yeah hip preservation is a single word but it encompasses uh, various procedures of uh, too many varieties uh, unlike a total hip replacement which is a single surgery and the patient is able to understand what hip replacement actually means but when we talk about hip preservation it's a gamut of uh, many procedures and it's spreads from pediatric population to adult to adult uh, to adult population where various surgical procedures are done depending on particular indications to preserve the native hip joint and to increase the longevity of the cartilage of the native hip joint so that uh, future possibilities of needing a hip replacement are at least delayed if not at all prevented and if at all then at the right time and right uh, opportunity we can all together avoid a total hip replacement in uh, adult life so that is the whole goal of uh, any hip preservation surgery so as we move along uh, we will uh, just know more about uh, what is hip preservation and uh, yeah so uh, first of all a very basic question um, what is hip preservation and how similar or how different is it to regular hip replacement surgery or hip reconstruction you know uh, surgeries yeah. uh, what does it include yeah if we talk about hip preservation uh, hip preservation means uh, where you are preserving the cartilage of the native hip joint so uh, there's a model in front of me where you can see this is the uh, head of the uh, femur bone the, and the blue area which you can see is the cartilage covering the femur bone and uh, this is the socket of the uh, hip joint which is known as the acetabulum and again you can see inside that area it, it again is lined by a blue cartilage so cartilage is the soft lining of the bone uh, where the joint surfaces they actually uh, come into contact with each other and as in a ball bearing of a machine it's smooth it's without any friction similarly the joint movements needs to be frictionless okay and uh, it has to allow native the native joint has to be uh, able to go through the entire range of motion without any pain or restriction of movement so any condition right from the pediatric age to the young adult uh, population where either uh, this cartilage lining gets affected due to various conditions either of the uh, of the hip, hip, hip uh, the head of the femur or the socket due to fractures due to diseases due to, due to various hip conditions so that puts uh, the hip joint the native hip joint at risk where the cartilage can undergo degeneration and this is a degenerated joint if you can see that's the model here and you can see the blue cartilage has now undergone erosion and the smooth surface which was spherical to begin with has now become collapsed at various surfaces so there are flat areas now within the round areas so this and even in the socket you can see this is end stage arthritis just the model to depict that that where the cartilage surface becomes irregular so when this condition happens there is no role for hip preservation surgery and only a hip replacement uh, uh, is the solution so between these two stages we have to identify and diagnose hip disorders and hip pain which most of the most often of the time remains undiagnosed because the most mm -hmm. most of the physicians they are unable to diagnose or unaware about the conditions which can present as pain in the thigh area pain in the lower back or pain in the groin and sometimes pain which is brought about by supra maximal activities like sports related activities gymnastics dancers so all these uh, candidates this report report sometimes vague pain in the back or in the groin or in the lower back activities like getting in the car getting out of the car activities like prolonged sitting and uh, activities like squatting which can become painful sometimes they present with vague pain and unless uh, the surgeon is uh, 
trained to diagnose that the source of pain could be the hip joint only then you will evaluate so making a diagnosis uh, itself is important mm -hmm. okay. so sometimes in pediatric conditions like uh, some some children have a, 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 a dysplastic hip joint where the mm -hmm. hip joint at birth remains dislocated if that condition remains undiagnosed for the first 5 to 7 years of life then it becomes very difficult to contain the hip joint back to its position so mm -hmm. these children need to be diagnosed at an early age so that their hip joint can be preserved other conditions are there some sometimes conditions like upper thigh disease or uh, a condition like slip of the physis epiphyseal physis of the femoral head wherein what happens is that the joint the smooth ball of the hip joint it becomes it becomes uh, it loses its position of sphericity in perthes disease and in, in a slipped physis the, the area from which the head grows it slips so that makes the entire head aspherical and when this aspherical head goes into the socket it causes damage by its uh, virtue of its abnormal shape it imp uh, impinges onto the socket and causes the damage to the articular cartilage so ch children at that age of at that point of time when they grow into adolescence and then when they grow into young adults they develop arthritis later on so timely diagnosis is the cornerstone of uh, any possibility of a hip preservation surgery so timely diagnosis and visit to the doctor at the right time is of the prime importance so that at least they can know that their hip joint can be preserved similarly okay. fractures <laughs> okay so um, um, as i could understand not everybody would be eligible for hip preservation surgery right yeah. yes yes okay so you have to select your cases case selection is very important i will just complete my uh, description of hip preservation the another very common condition in our uh, in our country and world across is loss of vascularity of the femoral head where, which is known as avascular necrosis right so right. what it does is that the uh, the vascularity of uh, the head of the femur the ball of the femur it it gets lost common conditions could be like chronic smoking chronic alcohol chronic steroid therapies then there could be certain congenital conditions where uh, uh, blood disorders can also lead to this condition then like the conditions like sickle cell disease which is common in certain parts of our country and in africa so in those conditions the spherical surface of the femoral head becomes flat in the advanced stages but if if the diagnosis is made in the early stages we can do certain surgical procedures where we can preserve the sphericity of this femoral head and avoid a uh, future collapse because we you have it is easy to understand because if one surface becomes flat and the other is round so the movement would be eccentric and it will cause damage to the cartilage on both the sides and ultimately the joint will get destroyed it could mm -hmm. lead to arthritis and the treatment of arthritis would be a hip replacement so timely diagnosis of these conditions is also important right okay so uh, when it comes to hip replacement is it is it done arthroscopically or is it an open procedure uh, i think you were asking about hip preservation not yeah. hip replacement yeah so hip preservation surgery again as i told you if there is a fracture problem so fractures cannot be fixed arthroscopically so fractures of the ball or fracture of the socket again is a very challenging area so this is the native hip joint so mm -hmm. there can be fractures of the socket there can be fractures of the upper end of the femur so fracture surgeries are open surgeries then there are certain conditions which are known as uh, femoroacetabular impingement or impingement of the hip mm -hmm. if, if we talk talk about in layman terms so in impingement what happens is one surface of the of the head of the femur becomes abnormally shaped so either the head is too much spherical and too big to go into the establum so the range of motion becomes limited and it causes impingement so you can see here here you can really move the head of the femur into the socket but if you imagine that the ball of the socket is more big than the socket itself if the ball is big than the socket itself so movements will cause impingement of the margins of the socket onto the head so that will again cause damage to the cartilage of the head and as well as the damage to the cartilage of the establum where the head is striking while movement so this is known as femoroacetabular impingement mm -hmm. so some sometimes femoroacetabular impingement surgeries can be done arthroscopically mm -hmm. so these are the only conditions which can be treated arthroscopically the another condition is after fracture sometimes open surgeries are done so more more often it is open surgery rather than arthroscopic surgery but again it's depend it depends on what indication you are actually treating for that reason because as i told you hip preservation is a big gamut uh, of conditions where we do hip osteotomies where we do uh, where we do uh, uh, operations where we can preserve the vascularity of the femoral head which is known as uh, surgical dislocation of the hip mm -hmm. we can do uh, certain procedures for avascular necrosis like core decompression where we 
prevent the uh, where we do the surgery to prevent the vascularity of the femoral head so these are open surgery so it encompasses a very wide gamut of surgeries mm-hmm. if preservation so it's all indication uh, uh, based Okay, so um, uh, regarding the effects of hip preservation, suppose there are two patients, one patient is diagnosed very early on and hip preservation is carried out and there is another patient in which, you know, who is a mid-stage or a late-stage patient but still he uh, he is eligible as a candidate for hip pres- uh, preservation. Then um, uh, in both these categories of patients, how long does the effect last of hip, uh, hip preservation? Yeah, so that's a very good question because earlier the diagnosis is made you can actually prevent uh, altogether the progression or development of osteoarthritis of the hip joint the arthritis of the hip joint mm-hmm. but if you diagnose it late there is some damage to the cartilage which has already happened but it's not advanced to a stage where you would uh, advise a hip replacement mm-hmm. so the goal of any hip preservation surgery is to delay the arthritis by at least 10 to 15 years okay. if by doing a surgery you can delay the arthritis by 10 to 15 years that means mm-hmm. you are increasing and if at the end of 15 years, say the patient needs a hip replacement, so during his lifetime, only one surgery would be required of a hip mm-hmm. replacement. Because revision surgeries of a joint replacement do not uh, give the same result as the first surgery of joint replacement. So revision right. surgeries are always of a, give you a less satisfactory and a shorter outcome as compared to the primary hip or the first hip replacement which is done. So the goal is to delay the arthritis by at least 10 to 15 years. Okay. And uh, how is the recovery like after hip preservation surgery? Are there any certain set of activities that the, that the candidate should avoid after the surgery, um, you know, uh, to, to delay a sec, uh, any, any chances of a second surgery and things like that? Again, the uh, recovery is again guided by the indication for which you are doing the hip replacement, uh, the hip preservation surgery. Mm-hmm. So suppose it's a fracture situation in certain, certain fractures of the uh, upper end of the femur bone. We can make the patient walk the very next day. But in certain fractures of the hip bone, uh, like the socket, we have to give a bed rest of around six weeks to two months to that patient so that the fractures unite before the patient can put weight. So for fractures, again, it is dependent on what type of fracture you are treating. For other hip preservation surgeries, like uh, uh, in pediatric age group, we do uh, we can mobilize the patient uh, in, in a few days' time. Uh, again, it depends on the indica- indication for what uh, uh, the patient has been operated upon. But generally speaking, uh, uh, not, a bed rest is always not uh, not advised. But mm-hmm. uh, there is a, peri- a period of restricted weight bearing for the first six months, six weeks to two months. After which, the patient gradually puts on more weight. So, if I tell you restricted weight bearing, it means that 30 to 40 percent of weight bear is allowed with the help of support, like a crutch or a walker, for the first six weeks to two months. And then gradually the patient progresses to partial weight bearing to full weight bearing over the overcoming next two to three months. So six months is the average recovery time by which the patient can actually resume his uh, uh, independent walking without support and uh, can resume uh, almost all the activities except except for sports activities, which the patient usually is able to do around uh, eight months to uh, 12 months down the line. So that's the general discourse of the uh, hip preservation surgery. Okay, and are there any very specific complications associated with the surgery or any warning signs that you know that patients should take care of and they know that they need to go to a doctor now? Yeah, after surgery, uh, the patient is allowed to move his hip in the bed till the time he is not full weight bearing. Okay. So activities like sitting on the floor, uh, like squatting, like cross leg sitting may, be have, may have to be avoided for the first two to three months after which he can obviously do all the activities. Okay. But immediately after the, any hip preservation surgery, the extremes of activities are actually uh, advisable not to do. Mm-hmm. So after extremes of activities like uh, extreme motions of the hip, like squatting, cross leg sitting. So these have to be avoided. Floor level activities have to be avoided, sitting on the floor using an Indian toilet. So these have to be uh, avoided for the first uh, six weeks to two months. And then gradually as the patient gains confidence, as the strength of the muscles improve after hip preservation surgery, he can gradually perform all the activity. Okay. So the beauty of the procedure is that you are actually looking at your own native hip joint, where in the initial period, you will have to have some restriction in your activities, but you are looking at the long-term result where you are avoiding or delaying the uh, chances of getting a hip replacement in the future. So that is the whole. So you have okay. to have patience for the first two, three months and then gradually when you start, start looking at the results of the hip preservation, they are long lasting, even longer than the, any hip, hip, hip replacement surgery. Okay, that's great. Getting a good result in a young patient for, from hip replacement is challenging because if, suppose if you advise hip replacement at an age of 20 years or 30 years, 
so even the best of the implants will give you 15 to 25 years of of uh, life expectancy of the hip joint if, it, if that mm -hmm. is replaced mm -hmm. so that means a, a patient who is at 35 years of age when he reaches 55 or 6 55 around 50 55 so we need a revi revision hip replacement a revision. most of the time mm -hmm. so revision hip replacements are not only uh, long lasting surgeries their outcome is not as good as the primary hip replacement. Suppose this patient is now treated with a hip preservation surgery at the age of 35. So by the time he reaches 55, he might need a hip replacement, he might not. So even if he needs a hip replacement at 55, so that hip replacement is going to last for another 25 years. So by the age of 70, 75, he is only needing only one hip replacement and mm -hmm. a hip preservation. So mm -hmm. that makes more sense. Right, right. And is there any possibility that if a patient undergoes hip preservation surgery, um, are there any chances that in the future he may not even require a hip replacement surgery? Yeah, exactly. So earlier the diagnosis is made, there are good chances that he may not even require a hip replacement surgery in future. So that again depends on the indication and and uh, what type of hip preservation surgery is undergoing and at what stage is he undergoing and at what age is he undergoing. So it is absolutely possible, yes. Okay. And just to summarize the entire session, um, uh, what are some of the most common indications in which, you know, considering a patient who is 25 or 28 or 30 year old and um, uh, we wish to refer him and see whether he's eligible for hip preservation or not, what are some of the most common indications in which yeah. he can be so, considered to be a yeah, candidate? Yeah. So let us start uh, from uh, with an age group. So if we, if we talk of children and adolescents, uh, in children, if I say less than 12 years of age, the common conditions are, like I said, a congenital dislocation of the hip, uh, like a Perthes disease where the vascularity of the hip uh, gets disturbed at the age of around 6 to 9 years of age. Then the slip, the physis of the upper end of the femur, where I told you where the uh, growing end of the upper end of the femur, that it just slips. So right. that age again is between 9 to 12 years of age. Then the certain pediatric hip infections which have happened in infancy or in early childhood, they can present with difficulty or limited range of motion of the of the hip joint uh, of the hip joint so these are also candidates for hip preservation surgery coming to another indication like active adults who are less than 50 years of age some people who engage in uh, sports activities and gymnastics like and dancers so these are the patients who are stressing their hip joint beyond the normal age so these patients can present again uh, with impingement condition of the hip which can be successfully treated with a hip preservation surgery Another condition which is very common like avascular necrosis or osteonecrosis where the vascularity of the upper end of the femur gets disturbed. So this is a very common condition which is a candidate for hip preservation surgery. Then there are certain uh, tumorous conditions around the hip joint which involve uh, the ball of the hip joint. So these are benign conditions, benign so as to say these are not conditions which can spread anywhere else. Mm -hmm. So these are restricted to bony areas around the socket or the upper end of the femur. So if they are diagnosed in a timely fashion, so again hip preservation surgery can preserve their own hip joint which can last a lifetime. So these are another candidate for hip preservation surgery. Then very important indications are fractures, which are very common. So a fractures, if they are not properly treated in the earlier stages, they can uh, go into a improper union or in a bad union in a bad shape or which can cause arthritis. So timely fixation of the fractures of the socket, especially which where the training is very less and uh, expertise is involved. So these require urgent treatment within the first 10 to 14 days because beyond that, the most of the fractures will become inoperable or will not give you a satisfactory result. So these are uh, various uh, conditions and uh, where we can advise hip preservation surgery. Yeah. So Dr. Puri, thank you so much. It was very, very, very informative session, even though it was very short, but you know, you have covered everything about that we wanted to know and we wanted people to know about it. So uh, we'll, we'll very soon, we'll do another session with another set of questions on uh, procedures related to the hip. So I'd like to thank you again for taking our time. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. It was a pleasure Thank interacting you. with you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.